Layton gated the story again as per usual, but it, you know, I'm sorry my upload schedule's been slowed over the, you know, the holidays and whatnot, but how can I not talk about this guy? Now, unlike many a Jordan Peterson hater, I am not unfamiliar with this guy. He's not a guy I've just seen in a couple of TV interviews and read a couple articles about. I watched his entire Maps of Meaning lecture series, which I wish I had read the accompanying book because there's some disturbing material about the guy in the book where he makes some personal admissions to some weird um, fetishes and, and, and bizarre ideas. And you learn that part of why he's so open-minded is because he's one of these wealthy elite faggots who goes and hangs out with savages to learn all, all their spiritual mystical behavior and shit. And then you look at Maps and Meaning where he talks constantly about Christian imagery and Christian stuff. And then you look at the guy's moral ethos outside of, you know, his usual speech run and his usual repeti repetitious repertoire of, of stuff. And you just talk to him online. You started being more communicative with people online, especially on Twitter. And you find out also from watching some of his YouTube videos that are more personal vlogs from his home and shit, you find out he's not a very well put together person. He is mentally ill for sure. Now, what kind of mental illness is that? I'm not entirely sure. He's clear. Uh, he has some severe dietary issues. The guy basically eats nothing but barely cooked meat, which is odd. And apparently he says if he doesn't do this, it causes him extreme emotional distress. The guy breaks down crying on camera all the time and not for particularly good reasons. He's this, it's almost, I don't want to say it's feigned, but it's like if it's real, it's just as cringe as if it is feigned the way he cries. Because what he's crying about are these conceptual ideals that are not something you should be weepy over. You can be like in awe of them. You can really care about them. You can be emotional, but the way he just breaks down crying over just like, Oh, Oh, people don't act like up noble and upright in the way I want, even though I'm a hypocrite and I don't behave particularly upright myself. You know, I basically, he, he's an overpriced clinician, you know, so he's been charging people just to be their life coach you know, effectively, even though I'm sure he has more training than that, he's effectively a life coach that's paid hundreds of dollars an hour. He goes on speaking engagements where he charges hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's phenomenally rich. He's raised a not very well put together daughter. Um, and he's one of these guys who tells you to clean your room and his room looks filthy. I'm not going to tell you to clean your room because my room's not in fantastic shape. It's not the dirtiest room you ever see. I'm one of these people who refuses to bring food into anywhere outside of like the kitchen and the living room. Okay. Uh, in my office, no food. Uh, in my bedroom, no food. You know, where I play games, no food. That In, in Florida, you have to do this because ants, you know. Maybe I should do a better job dusting, you know, and shit like that. But other than, you know, a little bit of laundry in the bedroom, a little bit of clutter around storage space, not a filthy guy. However, I'm not so cleanly that I'm going to judge you. Where I judge people is on the content of their character. So let's have a look at Jordan Peterson, Okay. He's a guy who has aligned himself with, I think it's the Discovery Institute. He's basically aligned himself with a, a Jewish think tank and has drastically shifted his opinions to the left. Uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, you guys know that uh, I don't believe in the right-left paradigm. I believe it's kind of a fake and gay shell game that flips polarly all the time and just is centered around a few issues. But one of those... Wedge issues that it actually very frequently does come up in the illusion of right-left politics is, is freedom of speech. And an important part of freedom of speech is the right to an anonymity, okay? And Jordan Peterson has come out like Elon Musk has come out. These supposed right-wing, oh, based, based, based figures are coming out and telling you, you shouldn't be anonymous, Okay. Oh, I'm a free speech absolutist, but I'm basically going to kick out everybody out of Twitter and then keep 80% of the draconian unconstitutional rules on Twitter, violations of Section 230 flagrantly. We're going to keep all that shit, okay? Especially when it involves my good buddies, the dudes. And now that Jordan Peterson is hanging out with the dudes, he writes a letter, letter to Christianity, letter to Islam, 
letter to like he fucking I think he even wrote a letter to Buddhists. Did he write a letter to the Jewish, you know, synagogues of the world? No, no, he didn't. Of course he didn't, because that's anti-Semitic. And now he's telling people, oh, only only Nazis, monsters, rats, and demons refuse to use their real name when criticizing somebody on the internet. Jordan Peterson, there is no such thing as getting bullied on the internet. Just turn off your computer, nigga. <laughs> Just close your eyes, nigga. <laughs> Stop it, okay? But to the extent that there is bullying that can occur from online interactions has to do with somebody who doesn't like what you said, so they find out where you work. They find out who your family is and try to fuck with their jobs. They try to get banks to close your fucking bank account. And in the United States, this is a risk. In places like Canada or the United Kingdom, it's a damn near certainty that your quality of life will be drastically fucked from you. Now, I know this is a word most commonly referred to in terms of taking unwanted, um, forceful, carnal knowledge of a woman, but there are actually multiple different uses of the word rape. Now, also to rape somebody is to destroy their shit and steal all they have. That's a rape. Like, the, when you sack a city, that's a rape of a city. Okay? Which often actually includes literal, you know, the other kind of rape. But this is, in my opinion, violence. Okay? Saying shit to people, even calling them names, even calling them slurs, is not violence. Attacking people's physical means of caring for themselves, feeding themselves, attacking their ability to work is literally fucking violence, okay? That's forcefully taking away from somebody something they can't have. At the very least, it is criminal theft, okay? If I came into your house and just started jacking your shit, that's theft. And when it comes also to, to depending on how you look at it, especially if it's slander and it sucks so hard that it's difficult to prove willful slander because most of the time well, there's only few exceptions to this you have to provide some sort of proof in court that the person is knowingly maliciously lying about you literally it's called like you have to prove malice um it it doesn't even matter because the truth doesn't matter anymore now it's like that guy's racist okay well what do you mean by racist well pretty much any criticism of somebody who isn't white is technically racism and then and so if somebody comes and says, oh, you criticized a minority, and then you get fired from your job, you can't say, oh, that's tortious interference. You can't say that's slander. Because, oh, it's just my opinion, man. And, oh, uh, racism is, is a, what's the factual basis of that? It doesn't even matter. So this is why when the left socialist communist dude motherfuckers, the long nose small hat tribe came in and just fucking destroyed the meaning of words... The entire po uh, point of the entire deconstructivist progressive philosophy of there's no inherent value in anything, traditions don't mean shit, nothing actually matters except for what I say matters, that kind of make-believe childish bullshit has made it impossible to defend yourself from any of this shit. Because you, it doesn't even matter if you come out and say, I meant this. They'll just fucking twist your fucking explanation even. Nothing means anything to these people. All they are is horrible fucking people. Now, it's ironic that I'm criticizing Jordan Peterson for using certain kinds of language. I'll close with this, but Jordan Peterson's calling people demon rats and monsters for mocking him and saying we don't agree with these, these nepotistic think tank fucking corrupt Jewish dudes you, you hang out with anymore and we think you're a piece of shit. And he's like, well, say that with your real name. Say that with your chest. You know, I'm a multi-millionaire. I can defend myself from this shit. But you, fuck you, peasant. He's a fucking hypocritical scumbag. And in my opinion, people who do that and the people he's aligned with who have encouraged Jordan Peterson to behave in this way are the kind of people I call demons. Because the effect they have is demonic. And, and, and especially in the case of the dudes, their intentions are strictly what any religious person, I'm not one, but what any religious person would cause, call demonic, which is the undermining, destruction, the mockery, 
of all of your religious beliefs, all of your traditions, and in, up to and including also your race and your sex and in, in, in everything else. And also, of course, your constitutional rights, your right to privacy. Um, you know, I would argue that anything requiring you to fucking identify yourself is a, is a violation of privacy. But, you know, it's it's common now. You got you to gotta register with this, that, and the other thing. But online, now they're saying, okay, you got to identify yourself on Facebook. Well, you think I haven't had a Facebook account since 2007. I'm an idiot for talking to you with my real face, okay? That name down there, I've never said whether it is or isn't my real name, but it's probably not. And just me showing my face means I'm probably pretty easy to find, unfortunately. And if somebody really wanted to destroy me, they'd have a hard time doing it because I'm not the kind of person who can get fired for should I say online. However, the shit I've said recently, I'm probably pushing that line, just like I'm pushing the line of getting this channel deleted and all that shit. But when you look at a guy like Jordan Peterson, some people would be inclined to say, either you die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. I don't really think he was ever a hero in the first place. However, the villainy is kind of new. I think it really has to do with the people he's been hanging around with and honestly his progressive mental illness. This guy's deteriorated rapidly i mean he doesn't look the same act the same talk the same or is and is not around the same kind of people he was three four years ago he is a very changed man and in my opinion not at all for the better that's pretty self-evident i don't really think it's so much a matter of opinion as a is a accurate observation that the guy is rapidly turning into a twisted fucking scumbag now i never trusted him when he talked about social political issues i found his his um his lectures on symbolism and jungian psychology to be highly accurate and even amongst some of my you know far-right peers they don't like my interest in jungian psychology because freud was kind of a quag but jung's not freud anyway that's neither here nor there the guy is not a meritless dude. He's not like Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian or something. He, he has done things of merit. But what he actively does and what his mostly perceived persona is, most of his fans have never read his lectures or his books or anything like that. What he is now, his public-facing persona, is a delusional, unhinged piece of shit. And he should go fuck himself. Okay? And I'm sorry if you used to like him or you, you loved the SmackDown and the Channel and 4 interview. See this? This is me furiously jerking off. Doesn't matter. Guy is a fucking scumbag. And even though he's probably been, some people, sort of like Gamergate, their first uh, foray into looking at the dishonesty of the media, then furthermore, why is the media dishonest? Because the media is controlled by the government. Why is the government this way? Because the government is controlled by dude businesses. And why are they like that? Well, because there's this long-ass history of what dudes do. And it has not really changed and there's a reason why dudes have been either kicked out or kicked, stomped on by hundreds of different peoples throughout the world because they're parasites, okay? They're just straight up fucking parasites. And if you get past all this Nazi shit and just earnestly look at who these people are, especially if you live around them, that, that makes a difference if you live in New York or if you live down here in South Florida or say, you know, if you just run into them. And even, even if they're whatever there's stereotypes about them just interpersonally whenever it comes to business whenever it comes to politics these people are vicious okay and they are predators and it's just the way it is dude and when jordan peterson is aligned with these people it's not going to produce a positive effect at all so sorry for being a little bit repetitious in this video i'm a little out of practice doing one take rants but thanks for watching and just don't idolize people i hate to say this because i miss idolizing people but they will always live to make you regret it always there are very few people that are worth the adoration that we as people tend to give any kind of celebrity very very few of them always taper your expectations of people i never had high expectations of jordan peterson i thought a lot of what he said was common sense bullshit and everyone's like well isn't it shameful that we live in a society where common sense is blah, blah, blah. no well common sense isn't the answer common sense is the first step to a solution and jordan peterson is not anywhere near 
anywhere near an accurate portrayal of reality. The guy has been caught multiple times knowingly dodging the the Jewish question. Um, one of the most famous things people used to uh, use to uh, bully him at his own public speaking events is whenever they got up to a Q&A, they'd ask him, what is Alexander Solzhenitsyn's, uh, if I even said his name right, what is Alexander Solzhenitsyn's other book? It's called Russia and the Jews, 200 Years Together. And Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who wrote Jordan Peterson's favorite book, who he thinks is the most important book of all time, uh, the Gulag Archipelago, or Archipelago, however you say it, also wrote this book. This is the only other book the guy wrote, and it's about what all the dudes had done to Russia. <laughs> and what they have consequently done to Europe and America and Canada is not too different. Okay, people don't want to look at this, but every single time I come to you, it's just like, look, the reason why this is the way it is is because there's members from this ethnic group that are continuously causing this problem in every sphere of influence they have. And the problem is their sphere of influence is near total. They have at least a finger in every single pie in the West. All of them. I don't mean all of the dudes. I mean all of the everything there is to have a finger in. They have a one finger in or a fist down the fucking thing. Period. So if you're wondering why there's this uniform cancer everywhere and you're wondering why everybody agreed to be fucking evil like this, it's them. <laughs> and you're not a bad person for saying that. You're not even necessarily a racist because it's not all them, but the problem is comprised of all them. You know what I mean? Like, th not all of them are the problem, but the problem is all them. You understand me? Anyway, long enough video.